we are studying in Daniel chapter 7, and um, in the part 1, we talked about verse 25. Quite a lot to talk about in that one verse. In verse 26, it says, But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. When it says take away his dominion, we're talking about the dominion of the Antichrist. Because in verse 25, we were still talking about that um, Revelation 13 calls him the beast. And Daniel 7 here, I see he's called the little horn. You can see that in verse 8. And um, whatever you call him, I, in my mind, I call him the Antichrist. But his, he has an appointed time. We talked about three and a half years being the time of the great tribulation. Gave numerous verses there in that first part. I just want you to see that he has a limited time. We, we talked about that, three and a half years. And he is going to have his, his um, time will come to an end. Look at verse 11, uh, Daniel 7, 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. When he comes to his end, he is going to go into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. While we're here in Daniel, look at chapter 11 again there because... It talks about his end. Uh, he goes out conquering and, and making war. But the very last verse in Daniel 11, verse 45 says, And he shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. So, when it talks about that glorious holy mountain, it makes me think of Jerusalem. It makes me think of Mount Zion. I'm looking for the rebuilding of the temple because uh, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he's going to sit in the temple proclaiming that he is God. When I see that he's going to come to his end, I can look in Revelation 19. And it says, 1919 says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. This beast and the kings of the earth are going to make war with the king of kings and lord of lords, which is here in Revelation 19. It says, um, uh, verse 11, I saw he heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. So I see that is Jesus. I can see uh, verse 16, he hath on a vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, but you look there in verse 19 to see the beast and the kings make war with Jesus and against his army. Because it says in 14, it says, Revelation 19, 14, the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So there's two armies there that have come together. And verse 20 says, and the beast was taken, the beast, I'm talking about the Antichrist, was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Both the beast, Antichrist, 
and the false prophet will go directly into the lake of fire. Do you all see that? Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go on to verse 27 here in Daniel 7, 27. It says, And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is about the third time this is said in this particular chapter. Look at verse 14. It says, And there was given him... A, you see uh, the verse before, it says in Revelation seven thirteen, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Verse 14, And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. And verse 22, it says, Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. I hope you see this. This has not happened yet. I just... Uh, want you to understand that these these things have not happened yet. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm just going to read you 2 and 3 there. Um, it says, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Verse 3, Know you not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life. This particular passage is talking about how we should not be taking each other to court. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to, it's like, if I felt like you defrauded me and owed me $500, yeah. it would be wrong to go mm -hmm. to small claims or file right. a civil suit when these things should be settled amongst ourselves. Right. Do you see that? Right. And and in this passage, it says, uh, it's, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Oh. I brought out to you, and that verse 2, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Do you see the saints in Daniel 7 and verse 27 are going to possess the kingdom. You are going to be in a place where, and in verse 3, it says, Know you not that we shall judge angels? That in actuality, the church will be over the angels. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? The angels in heaven now? Then? Yes, I, oh, I, I am maybe saying I was that. talking about demonic angels or something. Well, that's not exactly what it's saying. It does not say just the de demons. Mm. You, you, it, you are in a place of, you are exalted. Yeah, we are sharing, we are sharing the anointing and the judgment in the mind of Christ when we're there. It says we will be like him. Yes. H here's the thing. Don't get puffed up over right. thinking, I'm going to rule you with a rod. No, that ain't, that ain't that, Christ ruling. That, that's, that's man ruling. That's, <laughs> that's not... Um, I, I looked in here in Mark 10 because uh, this in Mark 10, you know that James and John, their brothers, their, their mother wanted them to sit on Jesus' right hand and, and left mm -hmm. hand. And he said, well, you don't know what you're asking for. And, but in that passage there in Mark 10, verse 42 says, But Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles 
exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. That's the way it is in the world. The great ones rule over the lesser ones. But it says 43, but so it shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And 44, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. And 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That tells me that that's the way we should be living our lives now. And that's what you sh should be thinking when you, um, you know, I, I just recently have read uh, the story about Abigail and how she came to be David's wife. Mm -hmm. You know, her husband was Nabal, which mm -hmm. meant fool. And uh, David had sent messengers to Nabal to ask for some food. And he said, ah, that... David is, he was he to me, and he ran him off, mm -hmm. and it made David mad, and he was going to go down and just kill them all. Well, when one of the servants told Abigail what had transpired, and um, she made haste, and she um, gathered up uh, food and sustenance, and, and hurried up and met him in the way as he was coming to mm -hmm. a great slaughter. When I was reading that and, and just read it last night, and it just stuck out to me because after Nabal died, David sent and said, I want you to come and be my wife, right? And here, here's what she, she said. When the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself on the face of the earth and said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Do you see that? Here she has just been invited to be his, the wife of the king to be, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And she says, let thine handmaid, she'd be queen. If he mm -hmm. is king, she's queen. Let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. She had this mindset right. of, as long as I'm a doorkeeper or I'm mm -hmm. washing feet, it's okay with me as long as... I, I hope you understand that's that. That's why David fetched her. That spirit she had on her, he identified with her. That's my good wife right there. It, it, I just read to you out of 1 Samuel 25. It's a good passage to read and to reflect upon um, because I see that she was prophesying to him mm -hmm. that um, it's marvelous. Just read it for yourselves. Okay. She Where prophesied. Uh, 1 is? Samuel chapter 25. 25. That's right. Okay. I, I just I want you to see... You're going to take the kingdom. But please, it's not in any of us to be puffed up or no. full of pride. Because that is what caused Satan's fall. I will exalt. I will sit in the throne. And Jesus came as servant and served. And we have to have that same, same um, mindset that, that Jesus had. I mean, be like-minded. Yeah. The only way you're going to get along with Jesus if you have the same mindset. You know, if you're against each other, you just have turmoil. I wanted you to um, consider, you know, when we are studying Daniel 7, there are people that think that all of this is history. Because we have pointed out that certain things have passed. But I've tried to emphasize, like the ten horns... That has yet to take place mm -hmm. because those are the ones that are reigning when Jesus comes. Uh, consider that, that we have not yet seen Jesus come in the clouds. I haven't seen him no. come in the clouds. I haven't seen any of these things um, take place yet. 
when that last trumpet sounds, your body is going to be changed. You are going to put on incorruption. This mortal body is going yes. to be immortal. Those things have not taken place yet, but it will take place when he comes. So I can't say that this is already in the past. That would be wrong. Right. I'm still looking forward that this will happen. And um, I, I look for it to happen at the last trumpet, for the trumpet of God. You read 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 52. It says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. The last trump is the seventh trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And 54 says, So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. I hope you understand that has not happened yet, but it will happen at the last trump. Now, here's the reason why a lot of people do think that Daniel 7 is all past history. You know that in Matthew 16, Jesus said, uh, I'm just going to look over there in Matthew 16. Uh, it says in verse 28, Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I want you to know that that is not the same as what you read in verse 27. The verse right before it says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. That has not happened. We're looking mm -hmm. for that to happen. But when you read verse 28 and it says, Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The, sometimes people want to mix these things up. But what he's actually saying about the, that kingdom is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Right. That which took place in Acts chapter 2. Right. Uh, you can see that uh, in Acts chapter 1 that he spoke to them about things. Forty days he showed himself alive, speaking of the kingdom of God, and told them that they should wait in Jerusalem until they be empowered, right? Mm -hmm. And it, he was very specific in that um, to receive it you know in John 3 5 you cannot enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and of the spirit and you can see the consistency there mm -hmm. in the book of Acts you see it in Acts 2 38 when the people said what should we do and he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You'll find this again in Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19. Mm -hmm. There is a consistency. It's really hammering at home that this right. is how you enter the kingdom. Romans chapter 14 and verse... 17 Romans 14 and verse 17 it says in there for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost the kingdom of God do you see that the kingdom of God that we're seeing that spoken of is not what we are talking about that's going to happen when Jesus comes in the cloud. Right. Uh, another one would be uh, found in 
1 Corinthians 6, 19. And uh, let me just reach over there into that. It says, uh, and verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. It says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, when I talk about the kingdom of God, you have to understand that this uh, being born again, you have to do now in this life, while you're still here, to be able to enter into that kingdom which we're talking about. Does that make sense? Yes. We have one last verse here in um, Daniel 7. And uh, it says, verse 28, Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, uh, look at this word, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. That word, cogitations, I've never heard that before. And I looked it up in the concordance, and it's only used one time. And that word means thoughts or meditation. Mm -hmm. That's what it says here. Mental conception, cognition, thoughts. And you can see, he says, but I kept the matter in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this last week that um, how the the things were so troubling to him as he was uh, in verse 15 I Daniel was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me you see and um, we talked about how some things that you hear like you hear bad news and it troubles you and um, he was troubled. Yeah, you know, it says that, that it would be like meditating on yes. God. He, he considered his thought, kept it in his heart and his thoughts. In Psalms, all over it says, well, one of the first ones says in Psalms is, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day, day and, and night. night. Yes. So lots of talking about meditating on the word and on keeping your mind upon God and the things that he said. They're all for comfort and direction. Right. Amen. Amen. Do you want to go ahead and close this? We're ready? Okay. Yes. Okay, it's been a good study. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We so appreciate your word. It's just not adequate to tell you how thankful we are, Lord, and how we glorify your name, Jesus. God, there's so much in here, a wealth of wisdom and knowledge that we desire to attain, God. We know the day's coming, Lord that we're in that entry into that end time, Lord, and that there's more coming and things, men's hearts are going to give out and they're going to faint and look at things and, and have heart attacks or whatever for fear the things coming upon the world. Lord Jesus, if we just meditate on the things that are coming, we can find ourselves in fear. But God, we have to just meditate on your word and know that you're leading and guiding us that you're going to keep us in your way. You're going to, you promised us your spirit. You said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, that if we keep your words at the forefront, Lord, that we will be led of your spirit and won't walk in fear. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this world. And I ask you, Lord, to put your covering of, of protection upon the saints, God. Let their hearts be joyful and gladly and rejoice in you. Alleviate their pains and their suffering, God. Be with them, Lord. Keep your hand on them, Lord Jesus. I ask you to heal your saints, Lord. Heal those that are in need and help them to come to know you as King of kings and Lord of lords. We give you all the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.